Honey, while you're in there, can you do the dishes? If you want your shirt, you better iron it yourself. Oh, and do the rest while you're at it. Natasha needs taken out too, honey. Previously on The Real Housewives. Don't you wish you could speed up your life with Revon Broadband Internet? Get the fastest internet in the Bahamas at the lowest price in the nation with speeds up to 70 megabits per second. Revon, join the revolution. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, the former Minister of National Security says the government should stop being cannibalistic in its use of crime-fighting strategies. The Customs and Immigration Union dissatisfied with a settlement reached with government. How to alleviate severe back pain. Plus, the Bahamas All-Star Marching Band gearing up for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12. 12 weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. As the murder count hovers at 106, less than two months before the end of the year, former Minister of National Security Tommy Turnquist says there's too much politics in the fight against crime. 2014 is the fourth consecutive year that the murder count has hit triple digits. In response to the spree of violent crime plaguing the country, the Ministry of National Security held a special meeting with stakeholders last month to develop a new crime-fighting strategy, the details of which have been withheld from the public. However, Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage has said that the government is confident it will achieve satisfying results within a short period of time. Those comments came on the heels of the murder of 44-year-old Andre Cartwright during a home invasion in Blair Estates. Since Cartwright's death, there have been nine murders. Weighing in on the government's response to crime, Turnquist said lawmakers must find a formula where they're not cannibalistic about the crime-fighting strategies of previous administrations. That until we depoliticize the whole uh, approach to crime. Whether it's what they say we did as the FNM or what they did as the PLP, there are many Bahamians who can make a contribution to the further development of the Bahamas that are not being allowed to make a contribution is because of the color of the shirt that they wear. That has to be wrong. Turnquest, who added that he was not invited to be a part of the special conclave to develop new crime strategies last month, said it saddens him that several of the mechanisms that last Ingram administration left in place are not being fully integrated into the crime fight. I think that there ought to be seamless transitions with, uh, whether it's the CCTV, whether it's the electronic monitoring, whether it's the uh, 911E uh, control room. These are things that were really weighty issues that took a lot of planning and negotiation to get to a certain stage to move forward. In, in fact, if you take CCTV, the actual task force started when Frank Watson was Minister of National Security to tell you how far back that went. But, but just pulling it out of the mile and and getting people involved and doing all the things that necessary took took a lot of uh, uh, of coordination and planning and to have a change of government and then to say you want to review it and start again i think is wrong turnquest said he doesn't believe that administrations should co-govern with their predecessors but he said no one group has all the answers on an issue like crime it's not that one government should give credit to the other government, but, but one ought to say, fine, we acknowledge what's been done to this stage. Let's see how we could build on it rather than tearing it down and starting again. 
And amid mounting concern over the Bahamas Immigration Policy, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Immigration Fred Mitchell met with Deputy Director of the International Organization for Migrant Ambas Migrants, Ambassador Laura Thompson. The ambassador was accompanied by Akita Marin, who's the Regional Technical Specialist of Counter-Trafficking. The meeting provided an opportunity for both the minister and ambassador to have a frank conversation on the irregular migration in the Bahamas, pursuant to the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Bahamas and the IOM in September during the 69th United Nations General, General Assembly on Climate Change. They discussed support for the government in an initiative aimed at supporting the Haitian government in addressing irregular migration, smuggling and trafficking originating or transiting from Haiti toward the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. The dignitaries also addressed voluntary repatriations and reintegration programs in Haiti for migrants who are returned to Haiti and also the need to establish a regional consultancy process to discuss the best practices and the exchange of information on migration in the region. The minister, in responding to the matter, stated that there were misconceptions in the media regarding the immigration policy of the Bahamas and a public education campaign is required concerning this process. In other news, disgruntled members of the Bahamas Customs and Immigration Allied Workers Union aren't too happy over a proposal agreement between the union and the government signed back in September after union members took industrial action. Union President Sloan Smith called it an insult. Simone Davis has more. Days after members of the Bahamas Customs Immigration and Allied Workers Union took industrial action in September, Union President Sloan Smith says the union and government agreed on a settlement proposal which guaranteed payment of all outstanding overtime up to August 31, 2014 to all union members no later than October. Smith said the agreed deadline has passed and union members still find themselves in the same position, unpaid and frustrated. The crux of what we're here for today is we're trying to conclude a most basic document, um, monies that are owed to workers, overtime, basic stuff, uh, increments, promotions, if they're transferred, simply that they pay those things, whether it's full rent. Uh, allowances for when they're on the family islands, if they have to move their families as well, basic stuff, all contained in this thing called general orders, the thing that govern our work. We find it that uh, as simple as trying to get those things from government, it's literally jumping cartwheels. Union leaders say government agreed to pay a 600 lump sum for the years 2012 and 2014, payment of rental and payment of a one-time relocation cost, among other things. With the recent strike we had, uh, we sat at the table at minister's request. Uh, he covenanted to stay the entire weekend and conclude whatever issues confronted, not just us, but TUC members. Uh, TUC unions. Um, what we found was we, we started to do some things and as a consequence of that certain decisions were arrived at. And I say that in this context. You will see that the issues that we had, we itemized them in that forum and we got signatures on some of those things, not necessarily all of them, but even though we got signatures on these basic things, remember now, these things are what is naturally contained in general orders. And they should come to us without having to sign a contract. He says union executives left a meeting with Minister of Immigration and Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell feeling insulted. Personally, we felt insulted to have to sit and bring a matter of overtime to him when in fact, that's a routine thing that ought to be addressed. That's, to me, that's akin to wasting time. Minister has other things to do, but would we have to bring that before the minister for decision? Promotions, people work every year. And in the case of customs, well, thank God they got promotions, I think two in the past year. But immigration, seven years, not one. Union spokesperson Cordero Edge confers that with that implementation, less than two months away, their members will face even more financial struggles. 
With the implementation of VAT in January 2015, certainly this is going to mean specifically about the customs unit that we will be re re required or expected to perform additional duties. We have additional responsibilities that are going to be taken on. If you haven't settled the contract before with the reduced responsibilities, certainly there has to be an, the engagement of a further discussion on where we go forward from here in terms of remuneration for those additional duties that they're having in January. So far, the government has said nothing about any increase in salaries or any benefits, any allowances or anything for this new implied tax in January 2014. Reporting for MB12 Weekend, I'm Simone Davis. And since the Ranfurly Home for Children experienced financial issues earlier this year, many small and large local businesses have donated funds and items in an effort to keep the children's home open. Director Alex Roberts says he's grateful for the donations and the help of citizens in the Bahamian community. Well, the home being the only independent home in the Bahamas, we depend almost entirely on the goodwill and generosity of private citizens and corporate sponsors. During the summer, we always have a cash flow problem. And so the news got out that we were considering closing the home, which wasn't entirely accurate. But um, nevertheless, um, with that kind of exposure, we've had some individuals and companies um, step up to the plate and make donations to the home. So we, we are in a much better situation now than we were then. The Ranfurly Home for Children, which houses 27 children, has been referred to as a place of hope for young Bahamians. This year, the home received donations from Commonwealth Bank, Fidelity Bank, Sandals, Aquapure, the Bahamas Orthodontic Center, and others. Robert said, with the help of the government, companies, and, an, and individual donations, the home will overcome its financial struggles. There are other homes, too, who need help. But um, as I say, we do get a grant from the government. Um, our grant, as I say, from the government is smaller than the other homes because we are considered private. But um, we need help um, in cash and kind, and um, the other homes do as well. He said he's hopeful that people would continue to donate to the home as VAT implementation approaches. VAT is going to affect all residents um, of the Bahamas. Um, so we just have to deal with it when it comes. It, it, might, it might impact the level of um, contributions that we get. So we just have to tighten our belts like most homes in the Bahamas will have to do. Um, that's just life. And members of the Bahamas All-Star Marching Band started their journey to New York City this morning as they gear up to participate in the traditional Macy's Day Thanksgiving Day Parade. This is the first time a Bahamian band will be showcasing its talent in the parade. Band director Jan El Justilian told MB12 the final practice on Friday night went swimmingly and members are excited to kick off the parade and show the world what the Bahamas has to offer. The All-Star Band is fourth out of the gate, so if you plan to tune in on Thanksgiving morning, be sure to tune in at around 10 a.m. That's when the band will be on.